The topic today is very interesting. I think what you will hear today can be different from your views on relationships, life, on family. In short, the topic is as follows. What relationships should be preserved, and what should not be preserved? Let's start with simple things. A huge number of people believe that it is necessary to preserve relationships for the sake of children. We should have a full family, so the children should have a mother and a father. You might think that because of your divorce, the child should lose someone. It's you who is getting divorced. The child has both, a mother and a father. Yes, something has changed. Some of the parents don't live with the child in the same apartment. So, who told you that if you keep this terrible family, the children will not understand anything, or, on the contrary, with scandals, screams, fights, and brawls, and we do not do this with them, then it will be better for the children. But we don't fight, we talk calmly. How calmly? The child does not see that his mother and father hugged, and kissed, sees a terrible alienation. And I'm talking about an inclined family, not about junkies with alcohol and not about fights with the mongrel. So, the answer to this question, is you don't have to live for someone. It should be natural. Many families live by this principle that keeping relationships where they have not been together for 100 years, then it is a pity to throw them out. Why? The fact is that when people divorce or the couple divorces, they have serious psychological problems. They fail to build a family. And this can lead them to depression, reduce their self-esteem, because we built and built, and then everything fell apart. And we have to admit that. I like when stars say, looking at the magazines, in interviews, we were the most beautiful couple in Hollywood. But the most beautiful couple in Hollywood, I think, is not only in Hollywood. You can't find such people in the Sverdlovsk film studio such also cannot be found. Here. Further, when you deceive, while deceiving in any way, in sexual, cheat, purely humanly, just tell me the truth. Well, yes, it's of course a problem, but it is necessary to save the family. Well, and so on. There are a lot of such negative stories. If you summarize them, well, there are very difficult moments. For example, you do not love your wife, and your wife is cancer prone in the fourth stage and can die in a day. You do not love, you have not loved for a long time. But to leave a person who is cancer prone in the fourth stage, well, how can I tell you, the same stories also happen. It was possible to summarize my idea and say, well, if you are uncomfortable, if you are bad, if you suffer, then why do you keep these relations? Now let's move on to the positive part. What relations can and should be preserved? The first is what you want to preserve. Unfortunately, my almost 40 year experience as a psychologist has shown that when a couple comes to a family psychologist, that is, to me, then it is not in the sense that the couple wants to save the family, one person from this couple wants to save, and the other is silent. Waiting for the breath. Well, what can a psychologist help? Return the husband, return the wife. Make sense of it. Guide to the path of truth and do not lead to sin in the form of divorce. No, I mean a situation where you can maintain a relationship, and you need it when you are interested in this. You've had something happen to you. You can overcome it with the help of a psychologist. And there's a point in saving the family. The second is a tough situation. When you love each other madly. But not as a man and a woman. But as a brother and a sister. Very ambiguous. I won't tell you the recipes in a second. This is a separate case for each. You need to understand. The reasons for the cooling of the sex are completely different in different couples. But if you have a human relationship, which, as it is sung in the song, is stronger than friendship, more than love. Here, of course, you think, maybe it's worth it. This person is sick, and sick not with flu and not even with gonorrhea, but with ludomania, alcoholism, drug addiction, and some other psychological diseases. It's hard to live with it, but it makes sense to keep the relationship if the person is being treated. Well, let me turn off my imagination now, because we have an hour of your questions ahead of us. So, what should I come up with for you? When to save, when not to save. I'm just expressing my thoughts. Let's listen to the best real story performed by the actress. Hello everyone. Here I am, the people's artist. So the first question, please tell me, as you say, if I wanted to get out of such unhealthy relationships, I even tried several times, but my boyfriend did not let me go. And now when relations have become really disgusting, I can't get away with it. I'm bored. I'm bored, I'm suffering, but I can't do anything about it. Why is that? And what should I do now? I'll tell you why. 
because your arguments were hidden by a non-grammatical mistake. You said that I didn't leave because a young man, very persistent, asked you not to leave. You know, I had a similar story, it was related to a business. When I wanted to leave, a young man asked me very, very much not to leave. And I, like you, surrendered, I fell on him. It was he who asked me not to leave. And now I pay a lot of money for my weakness. Unfortunately, you are also in the same situation that I am in at the moment. For some reason, you think that it's not your fault. You would have left, you have already tried to leave, but some young man somehow magically prevented this. Any psychologist will tell you that if you did not leave, you had other reasons. If you felt bad and you did not leave, then, reading the heading, the secondary benefit of the victim. So something kept you. And since you yourself gave a weakness, as a result, you have reached such a state, where now it is already difficult for you to do it yourself. I believe that if you are in a bad relationship, then 100% of them need to be thrown into all the blades. And you don't have to come up with anything here. There are simple things. You can be cold, you can be warm. It can be light, it can be dark. It can be good, it can be bad. But if you look like this, you don't have to look anywhere. You are either good or bad. If it's bad, you have to say goodbye. If you want to solve this problem now, and you can't solve it yourself, take a psychologist who will support you, take yourself in your arms, and do what you want. Another curious detail concerns those who are watching us now. There are some relationships, as I call them, harmful. Nobody loves anyone, or you don't love anyone in particular. You may be in love, but you are not. When you keep these relationships, you and your partner decide to meet your love and have mutual relations. Because instead of giving a person the opportunity to love and be loved, you took this place. And you don't give a damn, but you took it. So what's next? The next question is, I want to break up with my husband. I started to earn a lot of money, and I don't need any helpers anymore, and he doesn't want to be a real husband. I don't have fun with him anymore, and there is practically no sex. And I think I don't need all this, but here's my question to you. I don't want to tell him that I want to break up. I want him to leave on his own, so that he has someone, and all this somehow gets sucked out. I mean, I'll give my husband away in good hands. I don't want to initiate a divorce. What do you advise, and why do I have such thoughts in my head? Let's start with the last question to advise. Because you are afraid of a lot in your life, you have lived with a husband for a long time, you did not want to live, you waited for your money to appear. You have fear, ordinary fear, fear of what? I have no idea. You cannot express your emotions, you cannot express your thoughts, and you come up with an absolutely manipulative story, and you are not the only one. He himself should. I will create such conditions for him, that he will ask for a divorce himself. But, first of all, this is inhumane. Your husband has not done anything wrong. Secondly, ask yourself, what are you afraid of? You will say, listen, our marriage does not satisfy me. This, that, that. Or you can, I like to tell in lectures, that as a rule, any explanation, well, not any, but many explanations, instructions on how to assemble a wardrobe is not an excuse. But the explanation of why I want to leave is an excuse. Therefore, you can say, I want to part. He will say, and what if? And you will say, that's what you just wrote, that is, you will say, that's it, what are you afraid of, that there is not such property to be shared? Like, who is the initiator of divorce? Two closets with a servant or something? I don't really understand what scares you so much in truth. In general, learn to express your thoughts, not to be afraid of this. This is one of the manifestations of inner harmony, high self-esteem, and love for yourself. Think about it. What if I feel that one is better than the other, what does it mean? Is it time to divorce or just rest from each other? Well, look, I am often reproached for cultivating a divorce, because I am not married myself, although I was married for 13 years. And I have a great relationship with my ex-wife. We just didn't get along. Let me tell you this. I'm not going to build a monster that is ready to divorce at any cost. I'll say this. You can live separately. I offer you the famous American system, which is used all over the world. This is a very old system. When people do not know how to act, stay in a relationship, or at end of a relationship, that is, there is no clear idea, they are offered the following scenario. They can't have sex with each other. I didn't say it all. I said with each other. They can't figure out the relationship. You are like this, you are like that. And finally, they can't discuss each other as a person. Not in the past, not in the present, not in the future. Neither the relationship nor each other. These are the three things. You can't have sex with each other, 
You can't have sex and you can't discuss each other. What can you do? Everything is possible. You can come home if you have children there, you can plan a weekend together, even a vacation. You can spend time together, you should sleep, not just in different beds, but in different, preferably, rooms. If you can do it, you can go to Bali even tomorrow. The meaning of this experiment is as follows. For three months, each of the spouses or partners will have an absolutely clear and transparent feeling of what they want. But now you definitely don't know. Now for you, any decision is a willful decision, that is, I am not ready for this, but since you have to make a decision here, I will take some decision, the problem is that you will be dissatisfied with this decision at the stage of reception, you will be pulled back, you want to be alone or return to your lover or mistress, if you have them at that moment. And the very idea of divorce arose because of this. Clear? Think about it. Let's go ahead. Okay. How to understand that this is love, not dependence? How to leave if I can't and don't want other relations? As if the wedge on this came together. As if without this person there is no life. I remember there was such a song, it was called Vulgar. It sounds like this. A white light has come down on you. A white light has come down on you. A white light has come down on you. I don't remember how many times it is. Three, I think, even four times, this white light has come down, repeated in the song. And look what it is. It is about a person being in a rather difficult form of addiction. As if he were sitting on a heroin pill. You have a difficult form. But whatever the difficult form, you can get rid of it. From addiction. For this you need, I just said, I repeat it for you on purpose, stop calling it love. Explain to yourself that a very strange phrase, which in the cinema sounds amazing, and in life is not, is that somehow there is no peace in life, that all my life, all my world, one of my friends says, I'm generally dissolving in men. I swear. It's not about love, my dear. It's about the fact that you are a person dependent on relationships, a person ready to betray himself for the sake of these relationships, a person who does not remember himself at all because he has no relationships. There is no condemnation in the words. These are people, as a rule, deprived of full communication with their parents in childhood. Mother, father, it does not matter. These people are very attached to relationships. I participated in one project. Oh, we shot the pilot episode, but it never came out. Well, someday it will come out. About the relationship, family, and so on. And the first character, the first hero of this project, talk show, was, I think, Milana, Milena, who married a very famous football player. He beat her and broke her nose. She gave birth to a son with her nose broken. And, as you are writing now, she dissolved, forgot herself, and so on. And at some point, she suddenly realized that she was just rolling into the abyss with her broken nose and son. She took everything in her hands and left her husband. She didn't just leave her husband. She created a society of help for the whole fund of those who suffered from family violence. And so, in this talk show, the host asks me, please tell me why our women forgive everything to men. She is beaten, her nose is broken, she gives birth to a child. What is it? I said then what I will tell you now. And she does not forgive. And it is not about forgiveness at all. She clings to men, well, to her husband specifically. Not because she forgives him, but because she is afraid to leave her husband. She is afraid to live alone. She will give everything for the relationship. That's why. She gives birth to a child with her nose broken. Not because she is a generous mother Teresa, but because she is afraid to be alone, and she will gnaw her throat for the relationship. And she sits and listens to it. I see it for the first time. I didn't even know before that it was her. And when it came to the last minute, she says, yes, your psychologist is telling the truth. I lacked parents in childhood. I am a psychologist, I miss my parents, I miss my relationship, and I have to endure all this, the main thing is that he is not from me, not me from him, and even so that he does not leave me. Therefore, when you think that you have an insane love, that you are terribly attached to a person, keep in mind that this is a big problem. Fear of being alone, without family, without money, without housing, and most importantly, without relationships. This is especially necessary for neurotics who draw strength from conflicts, feelings of resentment, humiliation, and so on. And it would seem that the girlfriends say, why do you live with this man? They do not understand her subtle nature, her floating soul, that she is just afraid to go out the door, and not to divorce. Well, let's go further. How to behave in a relationship if a partner does not know what he wants, but he doesn't enjoy the relationship? Well, first of all, this is one of the most common mistakes that women often make when they confuse men and women with children. 
How to motivate him? Does he study for a two-year degree? Listen, you are adults, you are the person you are, your partner is so self-assured, it's his business. You don't have to get in there, you don't have to educate him, re-educate him, explain that this is wrong. You have already taken, how to say, a grown-up puppy. He is not a puppy. He, I think, at least has 18. Therefore, let him live as he wants if it bothers you, this is another question, you can ask yourself the question, do I want? He doesn't know what he wants. Yes, please, you can ask questions like that. But how about him? What about him? Nothing about him. Do you accept him? My friends, I will look here, of course, a little bit of an idealist. Or even not a little bit. Probably I am an idealist. And my idealism is that I think that a person should be accepted as a whole. Together with the skin and bones. I can't take it with a spoon, with a bone. And here, like, he's trying to get me here, but not really, no. This is, we return again to the detriments of everything that surrounds people who are not confident in themselves, with anxiety, low self-esteem, and so on. Next question. How to get up and leave? In marriage, 18 years, two children. How to understand that the horse is dead? You don't need to leave abruptly, because when you got married, you were at least preparing for it. You bought a fleur de range, apparently decorated the hall, invited guests. Why should you leave abruptly? No, you need to think about what you will do, how this divorce will be carried out, how you will talk, how you will share, what you will do with the children, and so on. If you are not ready for this, then you have this proposal of our American colleagues about separate living for three months. Maybe this will clarify something in your life. If you see that no, you have to leave, well, then at least prepare for the departure and leave. Friends, in general, this practice is not about family therapy, it is about understanding yourself, what you are like in your relationships, and what you need to be happy. Therefore, this training is not intended for such an individual passage. The question of why he did that to me is a victim's question. It is better to ask yourself the question. Let's say he had no other woman, he was just cheating on you. You can ask yourself, was there something in your life that you were keeping your eyes on? For example, he went to the toilet, spoke on the phone, put the phone screen down to silent mode, and blocked it. Did you have any calls that could say that your husband was hiding something from you? If they were, you did not respond to them, then the question is not why he did it, but why I did not sing it. But in the process of therapy, it turns out that people already understood that something was wrong, but it was beneficial for them to close their eyes. I don't know what it was. And I continued anyway because I was afraid to leave. It is better to talk about yourself. You can't say that you are guilty, I don't ask such questions. But if you manage to cling to something that could have foretold what happened, it will be easier for you to admit that you yourself closed your eyes to it. Then you will be out of the category of the victim. Is it clear? Next question. Should I operate in a dependent relationship sharply? Listen, well, in general, like an alcoholic who suddenly realized that he was an alcoholic. I will tell you how I interrupted my dependent relationship with smoking. My friends, I'm not kidding, I also mention it in the book. I do not see any difference between love addiction and addiction to tobacco. Just none. And from the point of view of psychophysiology and biochemistry, these are really the same processes. The cells are put in the brain cells, they are friendly to them, they are right away like this, and unfortunately, all this has been working like clockwork for centuries. And I, the first thing I did, and what I highly recommend you do right now, I stopped telling myself that I love to smoke. I started smoking when I was a child. I liked it. Oh, this one has such a taste. So, when you stop playing this shit, and just say, listen, I'm just a drug addict. Why did I tell myself that I was a drug addict? Because I could not quit smoking. When we talked about love, there was a question between addiction and love, what is the difference? People also have an addiction. It has a positive nature. You may be upset if your loved one dies or gets sick, or has problems. But as for himself, he only causes a flood of joy from your addiction. But drug addiction causes a flood of sadness, grief, suffering, and so on. He doesn't love me, so I can't quit smoking. I told myself, I was talking to myself, although I was still, how old was I? 45, I don't remember. That I'm an addict, that I don't like smoking, I can't help smoking. As you write in your letters, I can't live without it, I can't forget it. It's all the same. I say, I'm an addict, I'm addicted. I don't like smoking, I'm used to it and, unfortunately, I can't quit. After that, a month passed, and something in my psyche changed, precisely because I admitted that I have a problem with non-smoking. And today, 
I definitely didn't think so, about 2017, I went, I don't smoke. Not just don't smoke, but when my friend smokes right in my face, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't say, phew. I'm not trying to get some fresh air and so on. I was in Turkey recently, and in Turkey, you can smoke in all restaurants. I was sitting there, just smoked from all sides. Especially there, by the way, a woman smokes with terrible force, more than a man. But I ate calmly, that is, I'm not like a junkie who just left it. So if you say about your addiction to another person that you are addicted and will stop carrying this nonsense that I love him madly, that I can't live without him. You love him madly in the sense that you don't need any mind for this because you are just addicted. You can live without him. You lived before him, by the way. You didn't come out of the same mother's womb, did you? So somehow you live to it. And after it you will be happy to live. But you have to admit that this is not about love, that this is about drug addiction. That's what psychiatrists say. Drug addiction, not drug addiction. And then you are about to be released right away. I have been there for about a month to change it, and I even remember the last cigarette, it had a bad taste. I somehow put it out, it was disgusting to smoke. That's it. Next question. What if he left me, and I still want to get him back, and I suffer from it? Look, I just started talking about drugs and my cigarettes. A person who doesn't love me calls me love. Strange, isn't it? You are called by love by a person who does not love you. That is, you are ready in advance for feelings of indifference. What is this story? Usually, this is a story about a child who is not very sure of how his parents feel about him, seeking their love, running, and so on. For example, the most common example is a cold mother or a father who, after a divorce, did not show interest in the child. And here is a child where my dad is, and my dad left me, and my dad doesn't love me. Why does my dad have a different family, I don't go to visit him, and so on. This is the foundation for you later, when you are happy in your feelings. You do not love him, but you are dependent, not even on him, but on the emotions that you received with him. You are in a state of breakdown, but you do not do anything about it. You do not go to a psychologist, you do not solve this problem, you just suffer. From the fact that you just suffer, of course, maybe over time everything will be dissolved, as we say, time heals, but why suffer? Why now experience this state and also call it love? Let me help you right now. Only you need at least consent that you will not call it love, but will call yourself addicted. Then it will be easier for us to solve this problem. Talk to a psychologist. Next question. Is it worth saving a marriage, 20 years with two children, if the husband is a madman? I help, save, but there is no more strength. I really need your advice. Let's do it this way. But saving a marriage is another question. Don't save your husband, don't touch your husband at all. Someone is sick in the family. I mean diseases, not the flu, of course, but such psychological and social diseases as alcoholism, drug addiction, edema, and so on. Dear husband, I love you very much. I think you are a sick person and you can be treated. Bye. See you. When you get better, call me. Again, it's not that you promise to treat me, it's not that you swear to your mother that you will run to get treated. I will not support you during the entire treatment period. No, solve your own problem yourself, because the first problem for a drug addict and any addict is not recognizing yourself as a patient. I smoke with my cigarettes, but I've been smoking for three almost a day in recent years. Here, an idiot may not recognize that he is a drug addict. But he's got a new stand. He's got a chemical heart disease. So you have to tell your husband that he has a chance to be completely cured. It's not the biggest disease of all. It's a successful treatment. You don't have to divorce. You can live separately. But all kinds of relationships can be resumed after the end of treatment. Not from the promise, not in the process of treatment. In the process of treatment, you can support him. Well done, we are waiting for you, come on, you will succeed, we are with you, and so on. But these, I cure him, I save him, then I go to my mother, then I knock on the door, then I take him to the doctors. Not tired, no? He's an adult, a man. Do you want to be treated? Do you not want to be treated? This is his choice. By the way, you have a problem with addiction. Because he's just a player. And you have a whole bunch. You suffer, you try to treat him. You ask to get divorced or not. That is, you have more problems than he does. Think about it. And feel sorry for the children. Next question. I have a trauma, a fear that I will be abandoned. My mother said when I was a child. You can start applying this injury to people in life, that is, when you are afraid that someone will leave you, when you cling to a person, and from them, in fact, and throw, cling, 
So take a psychologist, solve this problem. There is no one person here who has a disease that cannot be cured. By the way, there are diseases that cannot be cured. There are no such people among you. Well, with whom you are dealing. Maybe there is something else in anamnesis, but this is not what we are talking about. Next question. What if I like a man? Then it turns out that it is mutual and I get bored. I have problems, I suffer, I give up on love, I rejoice, and then I get bored again. How can I change myself for healthy love? That's a good question. Half of what you wrote is based on this. I was abandoned, I can't leave, and he replaces me with the whole world. It's all the same. What kind of story is this? When people don't love me, I don't become interesting, because my goal since childhood is to make people love me. I saw that my mother didn't pay attention to me, I studied to get my mother to praise me. Now I'm 40 years old, I love only those people who don't pay attention to me since childhood. My mother never valued me. She only noticed the bad things. And now I continue to play this story. I'm an adult, I'm not with my mother anymore. I'm with people. I need to run after them to love them, to make them pay attention to me. As soon as I get a response, I lose interest, because I didn't have this in my childhood. I didn't have this, so that they treated me like I did. Although I can say, if you write letters now, your mother loved you, of course. She was maybe a specific person, that's another question. But she gave birth to you, fed you, went out, and you are writing letters now. Thank you, mom. I was born with a great soul, emotion and warmth. That's why I have this problem. Last question. What if I grew up in marriage, but my husband didn't and he stopped being interesting to me, can this be fixed? Yes, it can be fixed by divorce. If you think now whether it is possible to fix it by giving your husband to a children's school I just told you that you confuse men with children. And wives also confuse men with children. A husband is the way he is. He lives the way he sees fit. Do you like this husband? Live. Do not like? Do not live. You can tell him that you do not like him. Maybe he wants to do something. But you don't have to do or educate him for him. I had a couple of them 25 years ago. In short, the husband is the former driver of the hostess, and the hostess is a businesswoman. And the conversation was, I worked at school for many years, just like at school, but I have no more strength. He's sitting now, looking at you, and he's not doing anything. Again. This is not about your son, but about your husband, who is 10 years older than you. He was a driver. I gave him an education, I gave him money. Please, get a diploma, do something. He doesn't want anything at all. I say, Woman, what is this, the second quarter of the fifth grade, why are you so loud? But you don't want to, you don't want to. He's not your son. By the way, he has children. This is your husband. If you don't like it, you don't eat. Why are you yelling so much? I'm his. I'm his. And he's really like a double, sitting, looking at the floor. He's uncomfortable, but his wife got him too. My friends, what I want to tell you. All the problems that we are discussing today, they are really decisive. Thank you all. See you soon.